Last week in the bottom line, we heard about the overall consumer price index falling slightly for this year so far, including many ag commodities. Twyla's Neil Malasson now joins us to see whether or not the lower prices for livestock will mean we catch a break at the butcher counter. The bottom line is brought to you by the Cotton Board, strengthening the fiber of our industry. Stop me if you've heard this before, the lowest placement of cattle in feedlots ever. Oh, you have heard that. Well, it happened again this year in the latest USDA Cattle on Feed report, in fact, showing the number of cattle going into feedlots at 5% below this time last year. The number of cattle coming out of feedlots is even lower, 6% below one year ago. So that probably isn't good news for beef prices, right? Well, it's kind of complicated, so I'll break it down as easily as I can. First, to recap, a little more than one and a half million cows went into feedlots in August. This is the lowest number since the USDA started tracking it in 96. Marketing, or the cattle coming out of feedlots, was just over one and a half million cattle as well, which is also the lowest since the USDA started keeping track. Now, here's the kicker. There are right at 10 million head of cattle in feedlots right now, which is 3% higher than one year ago. So you can see slightly more cattle went into feed yards than came out, so the lots are retaining cattle in hopes to keep prices elevated. The reason they want to keep cattle prices higher is for three reasons, actually. One, feeder cattle are still at a premium. Good news for our Louisiana cow-calf operators, but expensive for feedlots. They bought a lot of cattle at premium prices and are hoping to get some of that value back. Two, as you can see here, prices for live cattle are 30 cents lower than a year ago. That's a problem for feedlots trying to get that good premium in. Finally, packers are just able to do more with less, so even with fewer cattle coming out of lots, the packers just don't really need them. They too are playing the waiting game, but unlike feedlots, they're hoping prices for live cattle will sink even further. The bottom line is this. You have fewer cattle going into feedlots, fewer cattle coming out, but we're retaining a lot more of them in those lots. This is the mechanism that helps the market correct itself and actually brings us lower beef prices. How? Well, the incentive to raise more cattle is there for producers, higher prices for feeder cattle plus low prices for grain right now. That same low price for grain is helping with feedlot profitability as well, even if they can't get the same prices they were getting a year ago. Packers doing more with less and soon being able to buy live cattle even cheaper as more become available. This means prices for beef are stabilizing and may soon even start dropping well into 2016. And Kristen, part of the bad news here I know that you're not going to like is beef is going to get a lot of competition from chicken as more chicken is produced. You know, people and with these high beef prices, people will start buying more chicken. And unfortunately, that's going to mean chicken prices will go lower at some point. Well, I've got a, a dog in both hunts, but let me ask you a question. Sure. Guess how much I paid for a pound of hamburger last week? Was it around $7? Six nine dollars. Wow. <laughs> that Guess is how huge. much I paid for two ribeyes. Well, at nine dollars, I don't know, eighteen. Twenty-two. Wow. I guess I'm shopping at the wrong place or something. Yeah. Well, they're know. averaging around six or seven dollars, I think, per pound. You know, on the the national average overall. But that's uh, that doesn't surprise me. They're just they're high. Well, I'm going to kick you off the show unless you start bringing us some better news. <laughs> Neil Malasson, thanks. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll start a new series of stories profiling Louisiana farmers and ranchers. Until then, you can watch any of our stories online on or on our website at twylatv.org. And be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. For all of us here at Twyla, I'm Kristen Oaks-White. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.